Hello, and welcome to Guile and Friends, the podcast where you hang out with game devs and hear about our pixelated shenanigans. I am your host. I am also the founder and CEO of Guile Games, Chris Bergman. With me, as always, our senior producer at Guile, Kim Edwards. How are you doing today, Kim? Good. You did that seem seem you see. I can't even. You did that really well. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make like a porgy pig joke, but then that feels like it's about your looks and it's just the, the stutter that happened oh, there. D- 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 and then d- d- you just d- d- changes d- the words. D- d- that's all. Yeah. That. Yeah. If I was a cartoon character, I probably would be porgy pig. Thank you. You think? The stutter. Okay. What would I, what else would I? I feel be? like there's probably a better one, one better suited for you. I just oh, yeah. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm uh, tired. This is a, a late podcast. Yeah. I'm about two hours late. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really sorry. It's fine. Yeah, I uh, um, I was doing something prior. Yo, yeah. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm good. A little tired. A little also. tired. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it, for anybody watching, they could probably see your shiny arm right now. Yeah, it feels very. I feel very naked, and it feels very weird to yeah. have my arm out, showing out those my guns. Little flab, nice. flabby arm. Yeah. <laughs> Looks good. Uh, for those that aren't watching the the video podcast, I just came from getting a tattoo. It was like a six-hour session. That's crazy. You thought it was going to be... I thought it was going to be four-hour and it would be in six-hour. Yeah. But some of that was like placement of the the stencil and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. So. That's fair. And uh, I would assume the person doing your tattoo would need to take like breaks we because that's a breaks. lot. Each were like 10 minutes. Okay. One was like to just, I don't know, pee and stuff. Pee and stuff, yeah. And then the other one was uh, uh, we ordered Skyline and hit like wolf down cheese conies. That I'm jealous. Anyway, that's, that's this is all shenanigans. Oh yeah, We're oh, so sorry, so ourselves. sorry. There, there's somebody on the podcast today. There is a very, very special guest. Very special. I've been holding this one back, folks. I know. Waiting until the perfect moment to deliver this amazing human. This is yeah. No one's seen this person on camera yet. I know. Dude, would you like to hear his bio? I would love to hear his bio. Drew Markham is a sound designer and composer with a bachelor's degree from University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music and a master's from Berklee College of Music. That is, damn. Yeah, uh, right? It's impressive. Drew has recorded voice for Disney and Pixar animations, feature films like Bones and All, and had his music featured on Apple TV+, Plus, MTV, and more. Drew also has sound design composition credits on indie games like John Wick, Table Stakes, Death and Tactics, and Sushi Snag, and is currently working on a little ditty called Ra Ra Boom, <laughs> as well as a mixed reality game for the MetaQuest 3. His music has been streamed over 50 million times and hit Spotify's viral 50 chart in Germany. And he has released official remixes for the Chainsmokers and Seven Lions. Drew is also a music technology professor at Northern Kentucky University and creates sounds for brands at Play Audio Agency. Everyone, welcome my good friend, Drew Markham. Woo. Hey, Welcome. buddy. What's up? 15 million you? times? This That's is huge. Weird. This yeah. is weird, so I gotta say. You're typically on the other side of yeah. the camera. Right over there. Yeah. Over but yonder. now we have Marcus taking your job. Yeah. yeah. And doing a great job. Great job, Marcus. Great job, Passionate. Marcus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, man? Good, good. Just, so, yeah, we've been hanging. We've been making Kim buy some games yeah. on Steam while we waited. What games? Some of it might be a spoiler because it's one of Drew's recommendations. Okay. So I looked at it and go, oh my it. gosh. Yeah. And then the uh, one of them was that Overcooked was on sale. So I just bought it. And then what was it? The box? What's Jack the box? Jackbox. Oh, yeah. That's, and I had to figure out kind of which one because there's. They're a Midwest company. I think they're in. Oh, Michigan really? Or there's, Maybe Chicago. That's there's cool. eight yeah. versions. There's eight different versions. So I'm sitting here trying to figure out what the best version they're was. They're cranking them out. Yeah. They're making the money. Yeah. yeah they are. They're, everyone that I've met from Jackbox is really cool, though. Really? Yeah. That's a fun sweet. game to make. That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, sorry for being so late. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Why are you only Just apologizing hanging. to him? Because I bought video games and I'm I okay. I apologized to you prior. <laughs> and I think at the start of the episode, I apologized to you. Hey, Kim. Yeah. I'm sorry for being late. Okay. Now, Marcus. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, I'm sorry for being late. For being two hours late, which is is too late. <laughs> um, yeah. So you're a music composer, game is sound mm-hmm. designer. For how would you describe what's the role in what you do in games? I know you do, but 
Yeah. Um, composer for games for sure. Composer for games and then do sound design and implementation yeah. as well. Right on. Not for you guys, but for some other games. Um, starting to kind of dive more into that path, like building music systems, yeah. things like that. In FMOD. Yeah. Yeehaw. Good old FMOD. Good old FMOD. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, it gets the job done. That's right. We need it. Um, what do you think is the best sounding game? Oh, I got to check my notes for this one because <laughs> I, I actually created this question. Kim was like, you should think of a question to put on here today. And that was my question and I had no answer for it. Um, You're so, a really good journalist. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> the hard hitting question. Yeah, the hard yeah. hitting question. Um, but as we sat here and talked about it, it was I... A, it was fun to talk about, honestly. Yeah, well, it was. Kim was like looking through the list, but I was really... It, it's just... There are so many games that sound good for different reasons. Like some games have really good music. Some games have really good sound effects. Some games have just really good triggers and um, like player interaction um, where it's almost like the player is kind of controlling the sound in a way. But Baldur's Gate 3 oh, yeah. is my pick. It sounds so good. Um, all of the spells, all of the impact sounds in that game yeah. are so like heavy in the low mids it's just mixed really really well and Mm -hmm. it's like you're not it's not kind of your first person game where you're like experiencing a lot firsthand it's kind of more since you're like top down it's more like you're just observing um but the larian team absolutely crushed it so that's that's my number one good number one that's a good number one um also hollow knight toss that in there great music yeah. Um, pretty like simple sound, but it just gets the job done. It's mm-hmm. really good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then obviously Ra Ra Boom. Of Duh. course. Yeah. Maybe that actually should be my That should have been one. your hey, answer. Who's the music for that? Um, that's uh, a little duo called Toy District. <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon. Coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. Um, yeah. I mean, you kind of touched on it, but like what makes those games sound so good Mm -hmm. (laughs) so well said thanks (laughs) not at the top of my game guys this is you know it's it's fine we're gonna have to carry this episode (laughs) and i forgot my glasses (laughs) oh that makes sense yeah why i'm having trouble reading yeah Yeah. you look like sketch (laughs) (laughs) what's up brother (laughs) sorry Um, all good what what makes the game sound good so music of course is Probably like the most noticeable thing for players right out of the gate. Um, does it fit the art direction? Mm. And then the sound effects obviously are really important. Again, like does it fit the direction? Does it fit what's happening in the game? But also like when the sound effects and music play. So I would say music, sound effects, and then the systems that kind of control those things. Um, like when does the exciting music happen and how intense is it and are there like different variations or levels of that music that happens based on what you're doing in the game so the system and then the voice too like the voice i feel like is kind of underrated like a lot of yeah just like the yeah. actors oh, getting God, really yeah. good yeah. voice talent in your game is so important um and i feel like that can make or break your game because it can be really cheesy or it can just be like top tier talent and mm-hmm. just add to the story and be super believable. It brings the characters to life, man. Yeah. In, in totally. such a, an important way. Yeah, for sure. And there was, I don't know if you guys played Remnant 2, but we were talking about that earlier. And there is a part at the very end of the game where um, it, it's like right before the final boss, the guy that's kind of helping you throughout the game kind of like yells out like, no, or something like that. And the take was just really off. Like they just chose the wrong take Uh. for that moment. And people were like making memes about it and Mm -hmm. making fun of it. And like no one could take the absolute climax of the game seriously because of that. Wow. So kind of an example of like where it can go wrong. Um, But still that game's awesome. But yeah, just those four things. Music, sound, the sound sound system. Yeah. Yeah. Sound effects, sound systems, and then voice. Right on. So... Very cool. All work together to make a good game. Okay, so you um, you come in to a game, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. There's no sounds. There's no blips. There's no nothing. Mm-hmm. How do you begin to determine 
in what you're going to create for any particular game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I feel like that really depends on how much is already done. Like coming into Rara with so much that already existed, like a world existed, the art existed, like cutscenes already existed. So, and voices that, already cast. Yeah, the voices yeah. cast. Like a lot of the voices recorded and yeah. there already. So something like that, it's like, what do these things sound like? What uh, it's kind of like building upon mm. the world that's already there and helping those things be more believable, accentuate certain things. Um, but coming kind of from the flip side, like sometimes when that stuff doesn't exist yet, um, it's just like kind of building a music direction document or audio direction document that's in parallel with the creative direction for the game, like with the art direction. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of building that alongside of things. Um, so in that can be voice direction, like what does each character sound like? Um, what do we, what kind of instrumentation do we want to use? Do we want the game to sound really organic, really synthetic? Um, do we want to use a lot of electronic elements or do we want, you know, something like, Breath of the Wild comes to mind where it's like really piano heavy, really mm -hmm. organic sounding. Um, so figuring all of those things out alongside the art direction. Uh, that's the dream. But as you guys know, sound always comes last. So <laughs> yep. oh, that's very rare that that ever happens. Right, right, so, right, right. Yeah. 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 So that's what I'd say to that. What um? So like you're I mean, you're also doing all the composing for a lot of the music and and um, and cutscenes and things like that. What are some of the tools that you work in in regards to, to creating sound? Mm -hmm. So Ableton is my absolute favorite. Um, I've been around the block just from like the audio creation you look side. Like you've been around the block. I gotta tell That's you. That's right. Been around the block. <laughs> is it a compliment? No. Oh. oh it was a joke. I like Man. how Drew took it as a compliment. He's I like, did. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you're right. right. Yeah. I've been I was. <laughs> um, yeah, Ableton is my favorite. I've been, I started out in FL studio back in the day and trying to be Metro Boomin. Yeah. As we all were in like 2012 or whatever. <laughs> and then went to Ableton for a little bit and then went to logic pro for a while. And then went to, then went back to Ableton and I work in Ableton and pro tools kind of mm. back to back. Now I like to do a lot of mixing in pro tools um, and it can just handle bigger sessions. So I use that for that and it exports a little faster. I don't know why. Mm. Um, but like the podcast, for example, I can render out audio way faster. Um, so I use those for like creating the sounds themselves. And then if there's any implementation stuff going on, FMOD is the go to. Um, I've messed around a little bit in Wise, but that's usually kind of reserved for like triple a studios and like mm -hmm. really really big projects and unreal um so i've done like a little bit here and there but f mod makes sense to me it just it's um it resembles a daw like ableton or pro tools a lot more um so i think it's a lot easier for people that are coming from that background to make the jump right so on. those things and then like a million plugins for like synths and effects and all that fun stuff. So, and then are you, um, do you do fully work as well? Like, is that, you know, when it comes to like more sound effects -y type stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't have like a fully studio or anything, but I do a lot of field recording. So yeah. I have like two field recorders that one, I usually carry around in my backpack. And then if I'm just like at a place that has a really cool sound, I'll just pop it out and it has like a built, built in stereo microphone on it. Um, so if something's like moving, you can actually capture the stereo field. So you can hear it move from your right ear to your left ear if you're wearing headphones. So do oh, a lot and of you're that doing stuff. a lot of MetaQuest stuff. Yeah. So it makes sense that 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 would matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it, it's interesting though because the a lot of the mixed reality virtual reality stuff needs to be mono it, because you're then taking a sound and placing it in the spatial field after oh wow so it needs okay. to be like its own mono sound and then we'll place it like in the room somewhere oh that's so interesting it is interesting so it's the stereo stuff is better for like cutscenes, right on. um more like linear audio yeah so cool yeah um 
how closely do you work with like the game designers or art or programming or, you know, as you're, I mean, I know with FMOD in particular, like you, you work actually pretty closely with like, we have a, our sound effects team is different than you, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, and they do a lot of the implementation, but it seems like you guys work really closely together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially for Rara, for the music side of things right now, um, working with them to figure out like what is the music system and like what plays when, and kind of like how those they how like each track overlaps um, and when it cues in and when it cuts out. So been working for Rara a lot um, with the FMOD team on just making sure that that's all smooth. And also just like even the most basic things like making sure the songs are looping correctly um, and making sure like the energy stays where it's supposed to be. It's just it's good to have other audio people to be able to bounce those um like work in progress is off of. And then on some other games, I'm the opposite situation where I'm not doing the music, like some of the meta quest stuff. And so with that, it's um, working kind of with programming to make sure that, you know, that we're set up. And then after we make F mod events that they're getting implemented correctly. And like when you're doing a music system or something like that, making sure like the values um, of transitions, like in seconds are where they need to be. So like one song fades into the next song when it's supposed to. So work with them for that. And then work do you with have a preference that like as far as doing those those two types of things? You're supposed to pick one is what everyone's telling me. Like you're supposed to pick. OK, if you're an, like an audio implementer or if you're a composer. But it's really hard because yeah. I love both of them so much. And you're so talented. Yes. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, it's just like. In the AAA world, like every everyone just is kind of putting that on, on top. Like obviously, if you're working at Bungie or you yeah, know, Larry, and like I said earlier, it's a very like, narrow role. There. Exactly, like yeah, you yeah, do yeah. one thing. Like yeah, and, and a lot of times, even in places like that, you, you have voice designers and mm -hmm. people that will only do voice design, and then someone that will only do sound effects, um, and someone that will only focus on music and music implementation. Um, but I really like doing it all and kind of being a generalist. And yeah, so I, I don't know if I could pick one, but yeah. um, I get to work with art a lot too for both of those things, for sound effects and music, more sound effects mm -hmm. um, because, and I see like you guys obviously with the FMOD team, like you have to send animations to the sound mm -hmm. team so they can make the sound. And that's how a lot of that stuff goes too. So it's cool to kind of like get to see the early animations and the early art and then get to figure out like what does this character sound like? Like what does their attack sound like? Um, so it's cool to get to work with everybody. I'd like to, I like to, you know, touch as many teams as I can. So you want to try a better sentence than that? No, I um, leave it. <laughs> leave <laughs> it. We're, we're going to clip that one line. Oh, please don't. <laughs> oh man. Touch all those teams. Get it out of here. <laughs> Remove <laughs> it. <laughs> Remove it. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, you, you had mentioned that you're a general generalist. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't want to talk about your, your new going to be very famous EDM duo that's mm. coming up, mm -hmm. but I do want to talk about the famous EDM duo you were a part of. Yeah. For quite some time. Famous is a strong word. Very famous. Very, fam very extremely famous. famous. Extremely famous. Extremely. I mean, your partner's at EDC right now. I know. <laughs> I'm really sad that I can't be there, but it is what it is. Um, sure. So I was in a duo called Starseed. Um, and we started that like in the heat of COVID. Like, yeah, first week of COVID, we started talking about it. Noah, who he is Starseed by himself now. Um, he moved also, also amicable, par amicable parting of ways. I yeah. Think like we released, we released more music after we split off, like with my other project that I kind of just do for fun. Um, yeah, we're still really good friends. It was, I just honestly didn't have the time to devote to it Yeah, that I wanted to. And he like, he told me one day, he was like, this is my ride or die. And so I didn't want to hold him back at all. So I think it's a good friend move. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And I, and it went as best as it could. Like yeah. he totally understood. Um, and yeah, so we started that in COVID and he moved back from LA to Ohio at the time. And we had always worked on stuff throughout like you know probably from 2018 until then it's like two mm. years maybe even more than that 
we were actually in a band together in high school. Oh, I didn't oh, you know that. Know each other that long. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. But like, but we were like more of acquaintances back then. Sure. Uh, we were in a band. He kicked me out. <gasps> nice. Um, Wait, what did you play? I played guitar. Okay. And was he right to kick you out? He got the yeah. He got a guitarist from like a really popular band in the area. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. had just broken up. So I was like, I get it. Um, <laughs> it's fine, but. I wish that I was in a band, but um, anyway, so we started working on girls. I know. Right. (laughs) And it was like that. It was that time where like pop punk was just like at its peak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And so it was that kind of vibe. And then um, so COVID happened. He moved back. We were both kind of doing EDM projects on our own. um, And we always liked each other's stuff and kind of like talked to each other. And so I was like, what if we we have kind of this extra time right now? We're not doing anything. Like, yeah. What if we just started a duo? Yeah. Because um, we were working on a couple songs at the time that I loved that ended up being our first couple of releases. And he was basically just like, sure, let's do it. So we started it um, and just started pitching music. We made like 10 songs and then just sent them to labels and kind of like cold emails. And the artist Seven Lions um, his label just like hit us back and they were like, we want all of them. We want the entire playlist. Wow. And we were both like huge fans of that artist at the time. So we're like, this He's, is, I mean, huge artist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like, I had been listening to him since I started producing, like he was one yeah. of my first inspirations and, um, I had like seen him live during college. And so we sent that and they were like, yeah, Jeff wants to sign everything. Which is like best case scenario if you're starting a project. Yeah, I yeah. feel like it's unfair to tell that story to people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, my expectations. I've been pitching prog- projects for ten years. My yeah. my expectations had been absolutely beaten up and destroyed by then. So yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. probably no one will even respond. To yeah, this yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, and so that kind of just like got us out of the gates swinging on that project, and we just had momentum kind of coming out the door, um, and we had releases with some other popular labels at the time. And um, and it just kind of kept going. And then there was a label called Night Mode who, like, at the same time as we were talking to them, they had signed Knock 2. Mm-hmm. And then Knock 2 kind of exploded. Um, and ISO XO and kind of the, uh, like, bass house and trap scene. So we were kind of doing that. And then eventually got connected with Mousetrap. And it just kept moving. And Dead kept Mouse's moving. label. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it, it, the project just kept moving. And it got a lot of traction and then we started touring and playing some festivals and um it was a lot of fun but man that life is so hard when you work full-time job and mm-hmm. you have to like share a hotel room oh, and like there were a lot of times we just had to share a bed seriously and, oh yeah like we played a groove cruise music festival and we shared a bed for like four days Wait, and what's a roof cruise? Groove cruise. cruise. It's like, like, groove yeah, it's like cruise. a cruise ship music festival. Super fun. Yeah. But we had to share a bed. Yeah. And um, nothing against Noah. It's just we had different sleep schedules on that cruise. So yeah. like oh, no. he would be asleep at like 9 p.m. And I would come in at like 2 a.m. every night. And then he was up in the morning and I was like sleeping in. So it was tough. That's tough. That is For tough. anybody. And then you go back to work. You get home on like Sunday night. Go back to work on Monday and you're like, everything's fine. we're we're fine you know but uh and i think that was kind of just like i really really wanted to be working more in games and really really wanted to like focus on um that stuff and um so it was just it was a good time for us to split off and he's absolutely crushing it i think edc will be over when this comes out but um go check out starseed Playing yeah. anywhere. New EP, right? Yeah, I just put out an EP called Equinox yeah. on Slander's label. So go check him out. I think he's he's got shows around. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, don't worry. I will not be sleeping in the same bed. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, enough. Fair enough. Because you're both big spoons or I'm little spoon. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah, me too. So oh, I just didn't work. No, no, that's it's two subs worse. hanging yeah. out together. It's not gonna no go way. Well. That's not gonna work. <laughs> Um, <laughs> dude, that's awesome to have had those experiences though, and and how they inform. I think what's interesting is like how they inform, because I feel like we vibed more off of the music, like music stuff, than mm-hmm. game stuff, even for sure. You know, for early sure. on, yeah. And um, and you're just like insanely friendly and kind and collaborative and like thanks, very giving. You're like a very giving creative, and I think there's n- not a lot of those kind of people. 
Well, I appreciate that. And yeah, I'll never forget like the first time I walked into the Guiley studio, I was coming to play test Ra Ra Boom probably like a year ago. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. Um, and like, didn't know you, didn't know much about you besides the fact that you apparently had a game studio in Cincinnati that I didn't know about. Sure. Um, you're making a game. And then I walked in to see this like big dead mouse head. Yeah. And I was like, I think that we're going to get along. <laughs> I think we might have similar interests. <laughs> um, so that that's cool. Right on, man. Anything else you want to say about, um, actually one last, one last, uh, sort of game audio question is like, you know, I think there's, well, I mean, we've got Marcus, right? Like who's, um, you know, just getting his start in game audio. Mm -hmm. And like, it seems to be something that like is really difficult to break into. Mm -hmm. um, is there any tips that you have for people that are trying to, to break into game audio? Yeah. So the, the thing that I tell like students and the thing that I tell like people that kind of that ask me that question is everyone wants to be in the music industry and everyone wants to be in the game industry. You're picking both of those paths. So, um, it's going to be, it's really hard. Like it's really, really hard. Also a lot of, especially indie studios get stock music or like they don't want to pay for music. Um, it's definitely undervalued yes. as a discipline. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, and with like a lot of developments and like AI voice clones and like generative music that's coming down the pike, it can seem like a, like a scary field to get into. Um, so I would just say it takes a lot of work. You definitely need to network. Um, and then like never take a day off of doing the craft. Even if you don't have a job, like just keep making stuff. Um, learn some type of audio implementation. Early on, I had interviews with smaller game studios and they were like, we love your music. We love your reel. Can you implement that stuff? And I was just like, no. I don't know how to do that, but I'll learn. And they were like, we, we're not going to pay you to learn. Like yeah. we, don't, we have a limited yeah. budget. Um, so you just have to really put yourself in the position of game studio owners, um, the producers, like they need to get stuff done. So you just need to um, just make sure that you can do whatever they ask, like be comfortable doing a little bit of everything. Like being a generalist, especially in the indie game space is really good. Learn F mod. Learn F mod. Yeah. If you do want to take the triple A route, Try if you're in school still try to get an internship, um, and network, 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 and um, that it's really tough. I know with the layoffs and everything right now, audio is getting hit especially hard by that. Um, there are a lot of insanely talented sound designers and composers that are laid off right now, so like that's who you're competing with. So, yeah, just like. I definitely don't get down about it. Just keep working. The industry ebbs and flows. So yeah, you'll have your time. Be kind. Mm -hmm. Be a good person. Be collaborative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing, the other tip that I would give, I'm curious if you agree with me or not, but I gave this to, to another sound person at one point. They had a real, you know, they do the thing where like they take games that already have sound design. Like a redesign. Yeah. And then redesign them. Mm -hmm. And it was such, um, but this guy used like Destiny and like, oh, I don't know, two other big triple like Tomb Raider mm -hmm. or something, you know, mm -hmm. Baldur's Gate. And it's like you're you're remaking some of the best yeah. quality mm -hmm. designed sounds in the world. Yeah. So it makes your reel look like shit. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. pick indie stuff for your reel. Pick mm -hmm. stuff that you don't that people don't know the sounds to. Yeah. You know, trying to recompose the Halo theme songs not going to. I'd agree with that for sure. I'd say like if you're not confident that it's going to be as good or better yeah. than the original, then I would find something else for sure. Yeah. The indie yeah. stuff is good too. Um, and also I, another thing that I have seen a lot of too, is people doing, they do their redesigns and they also do implementation explanations where they're like, I built this audio system. Here's the sounds. And this is how I oh, put it cool. into unity. And then it's like a hiring manager sees that and they're like, I, already know that this person is capable of creating it, implementing it. And like, I don't have to worry about that yep. part. So that's one of my favorites about you. Like you just, you figure it all out and it's so low level for me. It makes everything easier. Like I genuinely appreciate that. Well, thank you. I I'm trying, I'm, I'm still learning too. Like I'm definitely no expert. Um, 
at like FMOD or the technical side. Um, but it's like, just keep learning. And that's, that's my plan. So you also take compliments really well. Yeah. That's sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I think he does actually. Oh. On that note, how about we watch the Ra Ra trailer? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so we're going to show you guys the Ra Ra trailer real quick. Also, um, low key, don't tell anyone. I know millions of people watch this, but don't tell anyone. The soundtrack's done and it's really good. Top it's to done, bottom. done. It's done, done. Did you mix and master it? Mm-hmm. Ooh, I haven't heard that. Mm-hmm. Do, do you, is that in the folder? Different folder. Okay. Yeah. It's all been all right. handed it, off though. It's in the it's in the, the Slack audio okay. channel. Oh, so he mutes the I channel. Mute, uh, okay. Most of the channels. <laughs> yeah. It's done. It's, it's right in on. there. Yeah. I'll send it to you. Yeah. 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 I'm excited. Um, yeah, and on that note. Uh, here's the trailer for that game and we're going to take a break when we come back gaming news recommendations shenanies shenanies Shenanies. do you have your joke about shenanies no I don't (sighs) again next week (laughs) next week okay Uh, we'll be right back Man, what a great trailer. What a great trailer. Never gets old. Never gets old. I think if I hear that song again anytime in the near future, I'm going to scream. <laughs> uh, not one of our songs. That was a licensed, mm-hmm. licensed song mm-hmm. for that trailer. It good, is a good, good song, song yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We didn't, uh, didn't um, mm-hmm. the person that made, made that trailer pick that song, right? Didn't she find Yeah, it? because we had, a little fun fact, we had a song picked out and oh, then, yeah. do you want to tell the story? You go ahead. You're doing great. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. You're doing great. Well, now I can't remember which was the event. We were watching the Game Awards. Okay, it was. We it were was at the, the game. game Awards, and we were. If I'm not mistaken, it was the one where we all dressed up. Yeah, right? it was like our the first time we. So ever. we we started this Game Awards gala in uh, Cincinnati. Um, you were there, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, where we all get dressed up in tuxes and suits and and nice dress, fancy dresses. Yeah, and like um, a gala, and yeah, and get dressed up fancy and we all watched the game awards together and raised some money for child's play charity. It was cool. We did it. It put it together in like two weeks and we had like a hundred or so people there for the first one, which was really neat. And, um, we're sitting there and we're watching that. No, I remember what it was. They show the trailer for crash bandicoot. I was going to say it was a big game. Like it was a big deal. Cause we were like, I felt deflated. I was and like, was, this song it was works. The song we had uh, already paid for. Yeah. And licensed for our trailer. That probably wasn't cheap too. It, it, it was wasn't fine. horrible, yeah. Um, but it it uh and yeah, and it was and it didn't that song didn't fit that game at all. That's what I think it that's didn't. what bugged like, me. Like ours fit our trailer. Our that song fit our trailer better than it fit their trailer, mm-hmm. in my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, but because it was such a significant game and a significant trailer, significant trailer. Yeah. There's there was no going back. Yeah. So then the person that did um our trailer for us which uh Vanessa Williams oh nice name drop she, she did an amazing job and she picked that song for us yeah she picked the song and yeah. it's really good and it's, it's really, a great trailer and it fits it fits the game it fits the characters and yeah. you know it fits all that so totally so agree. really happy with it um anyway who's ready for some gaming news i just i sure am <laughs> <laughs> i'm really ready guys <laughs> shit <laughs> 
<laughs> just wash this. Anyway, yes, please. <laughs> Your 30 seconds to Mars. It's my favorite sweatshirt. I think you wear that once a week. I probably do. <laughs> Pretty cool sweatshirt. Thank you. It's okay. Um, Marvel Rivals. Um, so the publisher, NetEase, walked back negative review clause for previews. So it um, the alpha, closed alpha came out, I don't know, a couple days ago, last week, or last Friday week? or oh, so. Oh, okay. Um, uh, my son and I are in it and, uh, we'll talk about that in re- recos, but in that, you know, the, there is a very long document. Um, part of that document said that, um, uh, hang on, here we go. I'll just read it. That's, that's what these are That's for. what we do. Yep. Ex- the, uh, extremely did as reported by PS, P, P, C games and the move came after the streamer, Brandon Laird, um, shared some contract details on social media, extremely disappointed Marvel rivals, multiple creators asked for key codes to gain access to the playtest, and are asked to sign a contract. The contract signs away your right to negatively review the game. Many stream- streamers have signed without reading just to play. Oh, that's dirty. Boom. I didn't know that. Yep. Um, and NetEase advised PC Games and that it is revising the contract with content creators in a statement sent to the publication. Publishers said the contract is a draft version aimed for aiming for long-term cooperation with the creators who are interested in Marvel Rivals. The development team hopes to have more meaningful and consistent feedback, suggestions, and criticisms through more in-depth cooperation. Also posted a statement on the Marvel Rivals content creator Discord saying it would revise the agreement terms. Um... Yeah, it currently has no release schedule and is currently running a closed alpha test. What do you guys think about that? Well, isn't that like the entire point of releasing closed alphas and betas is to get feedback from the game from people playing the game? Yeah, like yes. wouldn't they that want you that? can then use to make the game better? So if you're restricting that, then what are we doing? Like how are yeah. you going to make the game any better? Like how are you going to how are you going to make it better when it finally comes out? That just it doesn't really make sense to me. Um, I I get that they want to, you know, make sure the reputation of the game stays great and so people buy it still. But it just feels like they're more interested in getting the initial sales than they are um, making a good game, which kind of bumps me out. Is is it a free game? It'll be free to play, probably. It'll be free. Okay. Yeah. I, well, I like what blows my mind is like, why are they dealing with content creators this early on? Like, if you don't want negative reviews, don't because you can have a closed alpha and people aren't allowed to yeah. display it. Yeah. Like the, yeah. that game's on Twitch right now. Like you can watch wow. it. Wow. So like I don't understand. I don't understand that that's the gap that I see is like mm-hmm. you can definitely have a closed alpha where you're like, hey, don't talk about this. Mm-hmm. Sign an NDA, whatever. You can't say an opinion about it. You know, there's plenty of embargoes that happen constantly in games. That's a very normal, regular thing to happen. Yeah. Um, so it's weird to me that they're they're the relationship with content creators in general seems odd. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Any takes? No, I'm 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 I feel like I'm the same with you guys. I think it's it's odd. Like I know unrelated but uh, related. Like there's there's a lot of uh, companies specifically like McDonald's and like other fast food companies. Like if you download the app, like you have to agree to like their terms and conditions and it basically reads in there, like you can't sue them for any like malpractice or like whatever they might do. Like you choke on their food or something like that. And like that to me is, is dirty in itself. Like if you're going to like give something to somebody like, I just hate I just hate the the shadiness of I it. I feel like a lot of that stuff doesn't hold up in court though. Like a lot of terms and conditions. You think? That, yeah. I mean, I don't because of the way that like in reality people sign them constantly without reading. I don't think a lot of that holds up in court. I just hit the I because like agree judges know. Or whatever. Yeah, they're like. Yeah, well, that's, what's the point? They're paying these very expensive lawyers to draft these terms and agreements like yeah to make make sure that people won't come at them well the, it definitely deters them yeah right oh i see i see yeah. what you're saying so yes yeah, so, so then there lead there's my next question like it just says you can't so what happens if you do do they sue you right like, like it, i don't get that no i, guess. I, I mean my, my understanding is they would just pull you from the alpha 
Oh. Yeah, I mean, hopefully that would be it. I mean, I feel like it, it's really hard to hold back negative reviews on a game in general, no matter what the terms and agreements say. But also, like, one thing that I always look for, like, when I'm buying something, like buying audio gear or something, is, like, if I'm watching a YouTube review of something, I want them to say, like, I'm not getting paid to do this. Like, they sent this to me. The, the, my opinions are my own. Like, yeah. that's really, really important to me. And if that's not the case with people promoting a game, then I'm just, like, not interested in your review. You do that right in the mic. I'm okay with that. Drew was talking. This is Foley work. I'm teaching people how to do game audio. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. that the the word of the day? Foley. Sure. Okay. Is I this like a that. new thing? Is word it, yeah, of the word Chris of the Foley? day. Chris Foley. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that sound is in the intro. Yeah. Oh, so. well, look at that. Mm-hmm. Is that is is that how you got it? Yeah, totally. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Good not answer. A, definitely not a sound library. <laughs> no, it was not a sound library. <laughs> okay. Cool. Good job. <laughs> Yeah. Do they? Well, so back to that, like, if they said you can't, do they just pull all the bad reviews? Like, what are they doing? Like, how do you? How do you enforce that? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like, because you're saying like I want to know good and bad stuff, and same. Mm-hmm. This is probably why I always go to Reddit to find my answers because oh, I trust yeah. Reddit more than anything. That says a lot about you. Does it? Yeah. That's when we when I was picking video games, I went to Reddit. Like, I don't know. I don't know why, but I trust Reddit more than I probably should. Definitely. Really? Yeah. Should I not trust Reddit? You, do, you know, use your discretion. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's expected to be enforced in a lot in a lot of instances. Okay. Um, Still a dirty you know, move. Until you, until you have to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? But it's there in case you have to. Yeah. Yeah, I am glad that they're changing that mm-hmm. um, because you can't make it better without some criticism. So yeah. yeah, let's let's keep that open because gaming needs it. It needs the good and the bad. So fair enough. Uh, second bit of gaming news, and sorry, this never made the docs. Um, but uh, Amazon, you guys have heard of them? I don't know. So. Yeah, little uh, book selling company by this guy Jeff oh, Bezos. Oh yeah, that, uh, that book selling company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is ordering a Tomb Raider series from Fleabag star and writer <gasps> Phoebe Waller Bridge. I love her. She's such a gem. She's That's exciting. Writing okay. uh, the live action series based on the popular video game. Sweet. I love that this is becoming a genre in its own now. Yeah. Game adaptation. Game adaptation shows like yeah that's so cool yeah yeah it's so it's crazy i think amazon isn't just publishing the next big tomb raider game because i think they bought the rights at one point when embrace i think it was an embracer thing they bought it from embracer anyway uh it's not just publishing the next tomb raider video game today the massive company confirmed that previously reported news uh <laughs> that's my kermit the frog voice when i'm trying not to burp um, that uh, is all, it is also making a live action TV show based on the Tomb Raider games <gasps> and has tapped Phoebe, Phoebe Waller Bridge to write it up. I am um, so excited so about cool. this. I freaking love Tomb Raider. What do you love about Tomb Raider? So, I never played the game to be fair. Like, I actually just like the movies. Like, I like actual Tomb Raider because, like, to me, that's what? No, I just found that funny. Oh, yeah, that I've never played the video game. Yeah, well, the movies came out before the video game. That's how, right? I don't know. Absolutely not. I've is this a with game? Angelina Jolie. Yeah, the games were w- like well before that. Really? Yeah, PlayStation One, bud. Triangle boobs. Triangle boobs. Fine. I like the movie. Hate the um, the King's Island roller coaster. There's a ro- there was a Tomb Raider roller coaster. Yeah, we, it was like an indoor thing. I where like I you that. sit, oh, it was horrible. I must have not been living. I was there. thinking Disney World or something. It was at Kings Island where you sit, you like you buckle in, and then they. I don't know what it is. Was today. it Outer Limits? It, yeah, it I think it ride? is Outer Limits okay. now. I thought it was gone. Well, the Tomb Raider, yeah, it's gone, and it's something else. They always recycle their roller coasters, but at the time, I didn't like it. Is what I'm saying. But I really like the movies. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like about the movies? I don't know. 
was just like a badass woman doing badass shit. All right. <laughs> That's I all I mean. That. Yeah. Very empowering in my opinion. Yeah. I probably would like the video games, but not like cone boobs. You're saying cone boobs, really? Like low poly. Low poly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, right? Yeah. Okay. Like I'm just imagining like the James Bond. Am I that games. old? Jesus. I, I, I like, do. First of all, I love the old James Bond. So that's mm -hmm. if that's where we're working. For N64? Yeah. Yeah. Similar. I played that as a kid. So that's fine. I, I'll i probably be able to get over that, I guess. And you like Phoebe Waller Bridge as well? Friggin' love her. What do you Do love you ever watch her? Fleabag? She's no, no. So I, smart. I think so I watched stunning. 10 minutes of it and she talks so fast. Yeah. With an accent. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. It was just so. like, I just didn't have the energy to keep up. Yeah. She's so freaking smart. She seems smart. funny. She's so amazingly talented. Yeah. Like, I am here for all of this. Do you think this will mes mesh well? Yeah, no, it's a it's great. It's a 10 out of 10. Great idea. Why? We'll watch. Well, she's smart, funny. So what if she's writing it, it's going to be great. I don't feel like Tomb Raider is a funny sort of Well, she's property, witty. Witty is right? the better way to say uh, it. She's witty. And yeah. I want to... And, in my opinion, you can have a different version. You can have a non-Angelina Jolie version. So this could be a different version of Tomb Raider that's maybe like n more witty, more playful. You know what I mean? Like she ha yeah. she can do so many things with this. Yeah, I would like to see her, in which I, I mean with Amazon taking over Tomb Raider in general, I'm curious to see if there's a, a newer, another reimagination of Laura Croft. I know the last set of games were really, really good. Um did you play any of those? I didn't play any of those. No, I haven't played any of the Tomb Raider games, or I don't even think I've seen the movies. Oh, really? So I'm just the movies out are of the loop. Dope, in my opinion. Maybe um, I don't know. Yeah, they're they're similar they're to like. Have you ever watched the Mummy? It was a like long mummy time ago. vibes. Yeah, I could see. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It's like Sounds Indiana like Jones kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. yeah. 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 Like a female Indiana Jones. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I would like it to see a new take on Laura Croft. I think it would be interesting. Uh, to to have her be wittier and funnier and more yeah. Like, yeah like less less stoic you yeah. know less sort of cardboard like give her some some more dimension as a character i think yeah. it'd be cool like they, sure. there's different iterations of batman you know what i mean like yeah. he was initially a detective and then they went away from that so i kind of like the idea of like different mm -hmm. iterations of laura croft totally awesome cool. um those are my gaming news picks kim yeah. do you have a particular pick for today. Yeah, have you looked at this? Do nope. you even know what I'm about I don't to even, say? I don't even. I didn't even read the headline, dude. All right. I don't know how. I don't know what you're gonna say about so this. You're getting a but fresh take. Fresh take. Okay. This is showing up all over my TikTok, which is why I'm bringing it up. Okay. So okay. I find it to be uh, newsworthy, oh. like news. Um, social media users. Oh, I don't have my glasses, by the way. So this is gonna be clumsy. Uh, social media users are collectively blocking celebrities and influencers who have been silent on Gaza. Many household names from Taylor Swift to Zendaya to Justin Bieber, all on oh, we're gonna digital. Yeah, we're gonna okay. We're having this conversation on the podcast. Is that yeah? I first of all, I appreciate this because if they need our follows and they need us, then and they're not doing anything. Like Taylor Swift has lost a lot of followers and all you have to do is go in and block people. And honestly, it makes my feed so much better, in my opinion. Like there are commercials from the Kardashians that I don't want to see ever. And if I can yeah. just say block, not interested, it actually makes my feed something I want to like actually look at and scroll through. So in my opinion, this is this is a win win. Do you have any do you have any opinions, Chris? No, I mean, I, I think um, I understand from first free Palestine. Like, that's that's my position. Okay. I just yeah. want to be very clear about that. I appreciate that. Um, so I'm not being silent on it okay. at all. <laughs> um, I wasn't trying to, I like, don't want to be silent put on it. you on blast. Um, but I, you know, those people, Taylor Swift, Zendaya, Justin Bieber, ha are have full machines that they are holding up, you know, of people, like hundreds of people. Can I explain and, the article better then maybe? Sure. Um, so the, the reason this happened is because the Met Gala 
just happened. Yeah. And to have a Met Gala ticket, it costs you $75,000 mm-hmm. just to have the ticket. And then... And you got to... You're invited to pay seventy. dollars Yeah, you're invited to pay. Right? You can't just like go, show up no, and with $75,000. No, no. Anna Winter <laughs> has to pick you. <laughs> in a weird outfit? Yeah, yeah, and say, hey, this is the theme. You are invited. Wow. You donate this money to the Met Gala. And... Um, which is to fundraise for the Met. Yeah, which is it is. Yeah, there's a purpose I for mean, it. it. Yeah. Cool. And like Camila Cabello had like a glass purse. I yeah. don't know if you saw this. And it literally she's a just... Badass, she's but, a badass, but it melted in her hand. And the glass purse cost... I, I, don't quote me on this, but I want to say like $23,000. And okay. it was just a piece of glass. Wow. Not glass. I'm sorry. It was a... Sugar? No, it was water. It was ice. It was an ice oh, purse. Oh, that, and that, that makes in, sense. And then in the, in the center, there I was like... I didn't know ice was so expensive. Yeah, the way that they <laughs> they fostered the water from like these pure streams. Like, Dang. I'm not kidding. Virgin streams. Yeah, and yeah. then they put like a, a... I would assume pure gold, gold rose in the Did middle of it. not expect it to melt? I don't know because initially yes, there did. was two chains on it, so she was supposed to hold it as a strap, uh, and then those melted off, and then she, the this poor girl, honestly, had to hold it in her hand, and her hand was probably frozen, and it's just melting in her hand. It didn't do anything. It was supposed to be a purse where you hold stuff, but it was just like a piece of art that melted away, and I, I mm. believe it was like twenty two grand. Okay. Ooh. So like the, the like. What? The, how does that? It has so, to do with Palestine and Gaza. The way that they're spending their money and not using it, there was like a lot using of, it for good. Yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. there are, there are people that are hungry, starving, in need of water. Yeah, and mm. this is what you decide to spend your money on mm. these yeah. lavish things, and and people are now noticing like this doesn't feel good. Yeah, like, this feels dirty to me. Like, and you should you should be called out for it. And so that's. But I understand what you're saying is like it. Sh- Taylor Swift is not one person. She's many people. Yes. Yeah. I get what you're saying too. Like Justin Bieber's team consists of record label executives, managers, like other people that have other interests um, that, that may not want him to do that. And, or that may fear of like backlash for anything political. Taylor Swift is like the most unproblematic artist ever like she that's never that's why she's so successful yeah well, she, she never yeah. comments on always anything. sticks up for the little person like that's her thing that's her niche that's that she's very always but, but the point is like she's now being silent about it like I she see, has I see, I see. if, if that's saying. her stance to stick up for people that need to be stuck up for that don't have a voice mm-hmm. all of a sudden she doesn't have a voice for them that does seem odd to me i think i think that's a great point yeah and i'm all for filtering your feed to just be people that you like align with, um, like socially, people that have the same values as you. Uh, you, just, you just don't really want to see like the hate all yeah. the time. And I know that has like negative sides too. Like you can just be living in a bubble of like echo chamber. Um, but I think like everyone that you follow earns your follow for one reason or another. And that's a great way to get a point across is to say like, I'm not going to support you anymore if you don't support something that I think is important in the world. So I love that. Yeah. Great I, point. I, I like that we still, our voice still matters, I guess. I think it's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why everyone should vote. <laughs> that is why everyone should vote. vote. This November, baby. Mm-hmm. Going to be a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kim. Yeah. You know what happens if you uh, let them shenan once? No, what happens? Those shenanigans. again. We found it. Yeah. Kim found it. I didn't. There she it found is. It for it me. Was like they put it in the dock. Been waiting it's official. three episodes for that one. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. Um, so that has to be in the dock every episode now. Okay, I'll leave forward. it in there. Um, shenanigans. Who wants to go first? Do you want to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Kim, what are some <sighs> shenanigans you've had for the past week, or some shenanigans you're looking forward to? Um, first of all, you're always shenaniganing. Yeah. I'm very impressed. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. I live a dope life you and do. do dope shit. <laughs> That's right. Um, my shenanigan was, uh, over this past weekend, I hung out with a friend that I hadn't seen in a while and we went, uh, we just like hung out at a local bar 
and uh, we played my favorite bar game and I hadn't played it in so long. I forgot how fun it is. And I started to play this game this when I was called judging people. No, actually, <laughs> it's not fun if you're mean. OK. Oh, this is that's really that's real. That's yeah. your name. Oh, but hold on. <laughs> I thought he was just making a joke. <laughs> you can't be mean. Don't be mean. All right. I, I stepped on you. I'm sorry. Please. Uh, uh, but I you. learned this game in my 20s because one time I was at a bar and a group of people were playing and they came up to me and they, and they were like, hey, tell me that person's name and what they do for a living. And I was like, what? What are we doing? And then I jumped on it so quickly. They were like, we love you. This is so fun. And I was like, this is so fun. Tell me all the rules. And basically, you you have to pick the person for the person that you're with. So if it's group, like somebody has to pick it for you. You can't pick the person. And also noted, you should not be an earshot of said person because they should not hear what you're the, saying. The only time we've played it, they've always been an earshot. I know. It was a really bad idea that we played at Lackman because it's very close quarters mm -hmm. and we got in trouble. But one time I was playing at dog version and I guessed the person's dog and they're like, you know, Bailey. And I was like, no. And I had to explain to them. <laughs> so you, but you're making uh, this all up. You're making all it up. Yeah. So you pick the person for them and then they have to tell you that person's name and why they're there and like the backstory like what they do for a living or whatever and for me it's always like they're living their best life you know like yeah. this is john and he just wants to hang out with his friends and you know like he's he's not been doing well lately so he's been really looking forward to today <laughs> <laughs> You know but I mean? it always has a positive spin. Well, I like no, to give not it. When I play I, it. Yeah, <laughs> no. it depends on the person. I go dark real yeah. quick. You, <laughs> you could easily go dark for sure. It does get a little awkward, but then you end up standing in line, or you go to the bathroom with that person, and you're like, like I feel like I know Susan? you. Yeah, <laughs> I know your whole life. Story. And you got the dog right. I got the dog. It was so weird. They're like, you know Bailey, but like the dog one is fun because it's not based, in my opinion, what the dog looks like. It's based on the dog parents. So like, I scope the dog parents and Bailey had a bandana on so like that's a bailey to me you know but that one was funny yeah. that's your shenanigan that was my shenanigan. <laughs> judging people, judging people. I, in a nice way yeah whatever <laughs> what was your shenanigan um i just got a tattoo oh what no way what? do you want to explain it because it doesn't it's not colored yet right it's not colored i don't know i don't i feel very weird being on camera doing this i'm so sorry literally i just got it i was two hours late because <laughs> Uh, I just got it done. It looks good. I like that you asked Marcus if you looked weird, and he's like, ah. Yeah, you look kind of weird on camera. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so it is um, a graffiti piece by Devious, who is a graffiti artist that I've loved since I was a kid, Chris Glebe. Um, he, uh, you know, he was like a, he was a big part of Scribble Magazine in the late 90s, early 2000s, which is something I looked up to. I was a graffiti artist as well. And, uh, Became friends with friends with him not too long ago, actually. Super cool. And um, he's doing the art for Poi District, and he did all the graphic design for Rhyme Sayers and Atmosphere. And I think I've talked about him on the show, actually. Now that I think about it. Anywho, um, so this is a piece that is designed by him, um, and it has my wife and kids' names on it. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna get it colored at a later date. But it's the first time I've had a tattoo in a very long time, and I was really worried. I was going to be a wuss, and he said that I took it like a girl, which means... Um, oh, that, that you took it's it a, well. Yeah, yeah that's a, a compliment. compliment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Sweet. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was six hours long, and and um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I'm doing a it bad job looks taking sweet. It does look really good. Yeah. Will but, the other two sessions be about six then? Yeah, thinking? probably. Okay. Yeah. Just curious. We're gonna, um, at least two. There might be more, but um, it's going to be really bright. So we're going to have to go over. Oh, yeah, that makes gotcha. sense. Lots yeah. of aquaphor. That's my mm -hmm. only recommendation. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Yeah. So that, um, yeah, I'm going to leave here and then uh, probably pop over to the house while you guys figure out what bar we're going to. And I'm going to clean it up. Put, yeah, put rewrap some it. Put derm on it. Yep. Oh, and, yeah, uh, nice. Because this ain't working. Saran wrap ain't working. <laughs> no, it looks uh, um, clumsy a little bit. Yeah, well. I get it, though. You were rushing. It's on a clumsy person also, <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> um but yeah it's pretty neat i'm pretty i'm really excited about it and it's like i the thing is is i've you know had this idea in my head for about five years and to have it finally have it finally find the artist that can do it because there's like a lot of fine line work in there and um and then the color work also and then and the the tattoo artist his name's um k 
Casey Sears. He goes by Searsius on Insta. Um, I liked your picture you shared. Are you going to post that on your? Probably not. It was hilarious. You You look like a hot mess. And he's like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, But he's, you know, he's like a really kind tattoo artist too. And, and just like, like all came together, man. I think it's really cool when a piece of art comes together over time. And it's, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, Three different, three four different people kind of collaborating to make it all happen, which is yeah. cool. So, um, that's that was my shenanigan. That's cool for this week. Yeah, does Drew? Do you have any yeah, shenanigans? Drew? Yeah, well, um, it's my mom's birthday, and so she she had her birthday party tonight, but I I wasn't able to make it because we ran late. <sighs> Are you um, serious? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh my god! <laughs> I didn't know how long we were gonna do that. We, I, we, I, I you guys planned that. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't even look at you because we knew how bad you were gonna feel. So we're like, oh, oh let's do it. God. No, my mom's birthday is in June. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to be like, oh man, right after Mother's Day. Like, why do yeah. you just celebrate the yeah. yeah. old twofer? Yeah, yeah. 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 No, no. Um, <laughs> sh- real shenanigans so though. Uh, I'm getting married. In a what? week, and yeah. you're getting married. A week and three days. Yeah, man, it's on. It's happened. How are you feeling about it? Feeling a little nervous. Yeah, um, just like figuring out the last minute yeah. stuff. What's um, it feel like to like marry someone that's that far out of your league? <laughs> I ask myself that question every day. <laughs> she's I quite phenomenal. Um, yeah, she's great. It's, I I'm so excited. I feel like it's. It's like the the stress leading up to the wedding, and I know like the, I feel like the day of I'll be calm. Sure, um, you won't. Well, I wasn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, can I who knows? Give you a recommendation that someone gave to me. Sure, that was very helpful. It it happens in a blink of a second. Like you, it is such a whirlwind. A blink of a second. A blink of a blink Not of an a blink eye. Of an eye or a blink. A it happens. Yeah, <laughs> I make up my own shit. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> It happens this so quickly. To be a quick I know it's it, not going well. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Um, no, it happens so quickly. I someone said make time for the two of you. Like so, ours was like the f- like the first time we saw each other. Mm-hmm. Like that was like it was uh, in close quarters, except for the photographer. But mm. like make sure that you make time for the two of you because people keep grabbing you, wanting your time, and that is what makes it happen so quickly where it doesn't feel like it's like your day. Yeah. It's not your day. It's everybody else's. Yeah. It should be your it's, day though. So it's like, not. Uh, it's like, it feels like depending that, right? on, yeah, how yeah. you have your schedules structured, I would structure like 20 minutes, just you and her. Yeah. And it, we actually do have that. Okay. The cool. first look. Yeah, yeah. 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 We have that. Um, but I'm super excited for that. And then super excited to go to Costa Rica for a week. I'm after. so excited just that. like, Unplug vibe. Like, yeah. I I am gonna have it. So like all of the big projects that I'm working on will be done. Well not done or like at a good pause point right for that. So it'll be nice to just like not have even think to about do. Yeah. any work at all and chill on a beach for a week. So nice. can't wait. Hot dog legs. Uh-huh. Yeah, send yeah. us send us bikini pictures of you. Okay. But hot right. the hot dog leg version. Where you like take the picture and it's just your legs. You know what I'm talking about? It's called. Or is it hot dogs? It's called uh, hot legs dog or hot legs. Dogs? Yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, the the type of picture is called hot uh, dog legs because okay. you just right. show your legs on, and then the beach is like in the distance. Okay. Yeah. I'll try to do the time change while you guys are on the podcast. Oh, and nice. Send, send them to you. Perfect. So. Yeah. That's a that's a good shenan. Yeah, yeah. that's a great shenan. Yeah. I know your your poor mother. <laughs> <laughs> So mean. Oh, we were I'm we sorry. were mean I'm for sorry. thirty seconds. I, I I hesitated too. Yeah. I was like, do I do it? For I would have been so mad if you didn't though. Yeah. Uh, Kim, you got any recommendations? Uh, I do. Am I the? Oh wait, Drew's got the best recommendation because I purchased it. Um, mine is Bodkin. It's on a new show on Netflix. It has Will Forte in it. Love him. I love him. He's so okay. funny. It's an Irish mystery. Uh, Say that one more time. Irish mystery. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. yeah. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> I leaned in that time. Um, or wish I could say mystery. Mystery. <laughs> anyway, this is why it's going long. Uh, a quick synopsis. They show up in a small town in Ireland to record a podcast. See, like this. Oh. oh. Okay. 
Um, they knew they were chasing a great story, but they didn't know just how many threads they'd have to follow to weave together together the full picture and what happened one faithful fall night two decades ago. It's really good. Dude, that sounds awesome. It is really awesome. Kim, I feel like just from being behind the scenes on this podcast, I've like pocketed so many shows to watch, <laughs> watch just from shows. your recommendations. Yeah. You're po- you're not watching them though. You're just pocketing I st- them. I started Fallout. Oh, d- <gasps> it's good. It's good. Do you like it? I never okay. played the games. I'm like, games are I, fun. it definitely feels like a game show, like a ch- yeah, show that saying. was a game. So I'm trying to get over that because I've never played it. I don't know the yeah, Lord, but it's really good. It is good. Like episode yeah. two. It gets better. Yeah. Yeah. A look at a lot. A look at a lot. Do you have a recommendation, Chris? Ooh, me first. Um, I do. So I've been playing Marvel Rivals. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So how do you like it? It's a lot more fun than I expected it to be. I mean, I expected like a shitty Netties, like mobile clone of Overwatch. And it definitely plays a lot like Overwatch, but like characters feel very different there's something about the the marvel fantasy being involved that you like get attached to the heroes in a different way and a lot faster and That's like cool. you kind of understand you just have sort of a default understanding of their kit in a way that i, I think is mm. more difficult in in overwatch yeah or like an uh you know its own creative ip you know so like I, um my son was playing a uh, spider-man and I mean, he was swinging around like the Insomniac Spider Man. Like, like wow, you can swing anywhere. So like, cool. it's exact. I mean, you the mobility of that character is crazy. Um, he was taking out other players like crazy. So it's every Marvel character. It's a, I think it's like eighteen or something. Um, okay. fifteen or eighteen, something like that. I was playing as Iron Man. Again, nice. if it like the, the the kid's exactly what you ex- would expect. Like, he can fly. He's got a bunch of missiles. He can like you know fly faster. Um, it's got like a, a, a proton beam that he shoots out. Um, you know, Dr. Strange can create a teleportation thing for everybody to jump through. Like it sounds awesome, dude. It's really fun. It's really well done. It's very polished already. Like the game modes are really fun. Um, the, um, and the game modes are pretty much exactly what they are in overwatch. Um, the, uh, yeah, it's it, like the animation's really good. The art's really good. It's just it's just much better. So I, I assumed that I would that my son would play it. He would love it because it's Marvel stuff. Mm-hmm. But then you know he and I both playing it. Um, oh, at the cabin. I went to the cabin this weekend too. But, oh yeah, so many shenanigans. So many That's shenanigans. what I'm saying. Um, you know, like I had an absolute blast uh, playing it as well. So like, actually, really, really, really looking forward to this game. Sweet, come out. yeah, and that isn't just because of the agreement. Yeah, though, yeah, it? you agreed to yeah. say this. <laughs> I genuinely don't like. I don't have a ton of negative things. I haven't played enough to find those negative things. Was also part of it. Yeah, I've probably only put like three hours into it, maybe two or three hours. Um, but just had a, just had a ton of fun, um, and really enjoyed it. So keep an eye on it. It's That's cool. It really is better than I expected it to be, honestly. I'm not like Overwatch I played for a long time, but like you know, that mode, that game got pretty stale for me pretty quickly. I could see this happening too, I'm sure, but um but something you can play with your kids though. I feel like yeah, that's different. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, really really dig it. Really really dig it. That's pretty great. Drew, what about you? Recommendation. Best for last. Recommendation is Outer Wilds. I am probably like two hours in, give or take. Um, I don't know that much about it, but you can't really look up much about it because it is a little spoil. Yeah, yeah, it's like a knowledge based game. So it's it's loop based. um, So you go out and you explore other planets, you die, you end up back where you started. And the whole point is to go to other planets, figure out whatever there is to figure out like whatever the point of the game is that I still don't really know. Um, (laughs) But it's so fun. It's so fun to just go explore. Um, I feel like it's a really cool model for other games. Like from the little that I have read about it, it, basically it's like once you find out what the game is about, what you're trying to find out, then you beat the game and like, that's it. So it's like, there's no real progress that saves um yeah you just keep going and that is so so cool to me i love exploring um flying a spaceship 
And yeah. the like space mechanics are really cool too. Like if you're accelerating really fast um, towards a planet and then you try to pull back, like your momentum is still going. Mm. So I've exploded the ship a million times. I got oh, sucked cool. into the sun. Um, <laughs> it's really cool. And definitely, I love those games when you play it and you're like, this is something new. Like I haven't played a game like this before. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's one of Denver's favorite games. He actually, I think he got that for me for Secret Is Santa that what it is? Year. Okay, because I, this is how I put two and, and two together from earlier. It, but I, what? I no, you say, really cool. what? You haven't played it? I haven't played it. So earlier today, one of our devs, Andrew, and I were talking, and he gave me a screen share of his Steam because we were trying to uh, download one of our builds on Steam, and it said Outer Wilds. And I said, it's just unrelated. Like, do you like the game? And he goes, it is my favorite game. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I didn't mm-hmm. clock for me, and and then Drew was put it in the dock, and then I just bought it. I can't wait to play it. Yeah, I literally you know? why we were waiting. Did you I just get it. paid? Is that why you buy all, buy all these games? We should just get paid on Friday. Yeah, <laughs> making it rain. <laughs> making on Steam. it rain. <laughs> cool, man. Um, well, there's some recommendations recommendations for everyone. Um, things to watch, things to play, all that good stuff. Um, Drew. Uh, where can people follow you online and is there anything in particular you'd like to plug? Um, you can follow me on, I think, all social media at Drewy Bear, D-R-E-W-E-Y-B-E-A-R. And then if you guys are interested in what's to come, you should follow on Instagram at Toy District Music, all one word. Oh, we put it out there. I didn't. I don't think I follow you. I didn't. We haven't told anybody about. Oh, okay. This, this is literally the first time we've told Go anybody check it about out. where it is. There's Stuff nothing on it soon, yet. Yeah. But to be the first to know. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's it. Dude, that's a good one. Those are good ones. Yeah. Um, you just sprung it on everybody, man. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I have to manage that page now. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get stuff going up. Yeah, but I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna release this, the theme song sooner than later. So. That would be sweet. Yeah. Uh, I do yeah. like the theme song a lot. Yeah. It hasn't gotten old yet. <laughs> it hasn't. It's really, really good. Um, Kim, where can people follow you on social? Please don't follow me. <laughs> uh, you can follow me at Berg's Makes Games on Insta. That's kind of where I spend most of my time. Um, or at Chris Bergman on Twitter. I'm on there sporadically, kind of depending on my mood. Um, and most importantly, please wish list Ra Ra Boom on Steam. And follow at Guyly Games on all the socials, TikTok, <laughs> Insta, LinkedIn, LimeWire, Napster, BBSs. <laughs> What's LimeWire? Um, the, Lime Wire. the little watch that you used to get before there were Apple Watches that I can't think of the name of. Roku? No, but that was a TV. On Roku. <laughs> on <laughs> what is the watch you're talking about? Fitbit? On Fitbit, on <laughs> I was thinking of a Swatch Watch, but you can't do anything with those. No, there's like there's like a little smartwatch before you, the olds know what I'm talking about. Um, on hang on, MySpace. Oh, there we go. Definitely MySpace. On the Facebook. On I think we are on actually. We are on Facebook. On the Facebook. Yeah, Meta. On Microsoft Excel. Oh yeah. Did you say LinkedIn? Because that's actually one that's I did legit. Say LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. Pretty anti LinkedIn right now, but whatever. Okay. Um, anyway, follow us there. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I apologize for my arm. I uh, hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 <laughs>